<laughs> so welcome back to the video that um, I think a fair few people have been waiting for and that is the dyno. So finally the R34 Skyline is going to make some power. Uh, I want to see in the comments below uh, guess how much power it's going to make. Do keep in mind it's a very basic setup, it's an RB25 Neo DE engine, it's not running E85, it's just 98 pump fuel, it's got a GT35 76 on it, yeah, very basic, if you're from America, uh, your horsepower figures pretty much take the number you had in mind, halve it, halve it again and then you're going to get a true Australian horsepower figure, none of that internet bullshit, everybody making a thousand horsepower, so let's get stuck into this episode. So in the past I have seen comments about the trailer we're using, I've also received Instagram messages. I believe it is a tilter trailer, as you can see there's a sticker on the side of it with a phone number. There's only a couple in our state being Western Australia and as you can see it's still registered on New South Wales number plates. Um, we bought it off our friend Scott, we're definitely getting a fair use out of this trailer, probably one of the best things we ever bought because our cars are forever broken and how it works, it's got airbag suspension, you undo the air, the trailer drops to the floor, you drive the car on, pump the bags up, make sure the pin is in and you're good to drive off after you've put a few straps on and pulled the handbrake back up. So very happy with this purchase and to be honest, one of the best things we ever bought. Tristan. Oh. Morning, welcome to my uh, humble abode of shenanigans. Um, we, we're going to Junica. Sweet. Yeah. What else are we going to do? I don't know. Um, what are your predictions? Um, it has been put together by myself and a couple of friends. Alright, so it's not going to break because you're a good guy. Thank you. Um, and, and, and it's going to make about 317 horsepower. Okay. Um, Jethro, what do you think? Power wise? Yep. 330, 330? maybe. 330? Okay. Yeah. I say 295. Oh. Oh. Well, we'll see how we go. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Oh, 
genuine rotors. How do you know rotors came with a center cap that said rotor now? Yeah. Did, is, did you buy them like that? Uh, yeah, they come, but they actually make one where it's, where it's flat as well, which I should get. Right. I tricked him though. He goes, did you buy them brand new? He probably thinks I'm cashed as. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, man. <laughs> He's like, shit. Yeah. And I was like, the choders. And he was like, what? I was like, you fooled me. <laughs> Look, they even got like an anodized lip nowadays and everything. Ooh. What's the reason why we're changing the tyres, Tristan? Oh right, so the tyres that are currently on these wheels are a little bit fresh and new and sticky and squishy, which is not good for dinos. So we're going to put some old hard tyres on, which is going to give us a more consistent reading, and that means a better tune. There we go. I'm not even too sure what we filmed so far, but we are finally on the dyno. Uh, Tristan and Jethro have slowly started setting everything up for the dyno runs. Uh, I'm not very confident in the car, but we can just hope for the best that it all sort of holds up. Obviously they're professionals, they know what they're doing, where they're gonna spot things that might go wrong sooner than I will. And don't worry about the lines that are going into the bottle. I didn't really have time to get a catch can set up, so if uh, the engine breathes any oil, it'll just go into the plastic containers. Uh, and one thing that I noticed is Tristan's actually got this little contraption that has a knock sensor that you bolt to the cylinder head as they've done. And Tristan, what do you do? You can hear it through your earphones or something? Yeah, yeah. so this, this is basically a Ford knock sensor. So we put it on the engine, that goes through to an amplifier box so I can listen to the inside of the engine okay. on the headphones. Yeah, because we are using a older uh, Link G4. It probably doesn't have the best capabilities like the new Haltex or even the newer Link ECUs where it can pick up uh, if the engine is knocking or not. So this will tell him exactly, I, I don't know enough, but yeah, it's just one of the cool things I sort of saw that they were doing. Less talking, more work, and let's see if it's actually going to hold up. Alrighty, so day one unfortunately did not go to plan for us and 
the thing that caused that was the turbocharger. It wasn't making any boost. It started making weird noises. We just sort of shut the car off and Tristan said, you know what, you're gonna have to get yourself a new turbo. Luckily, I did have another turbo laying around off a Ford Barra. So the turbo that was originally on the car was a Kinagawa GT3582. Now, just before people start ripping into the comments saying, oh, I told you not to get a Kinagawa. But honestly, I've read a lot of reviews. I've spoken to a lot of people. All the drifters use them. A lot of reputable workshops over east use these turbochargers and the budget friendly builds. They make great power, they're reliable, but unfortunately, I think I actually killed this turbo. The problem was, is as I mentioned before, this is a naturally aspirated block. The block is tapped, but it is not drilled for the oil feed, which I didn't know. I just grabbed a fitting, screwed it in, ran a line to the turbo thinking oil would come through. This all sort of being my first time doing it, it was a stupid mistake. I should have checked if oil was coming out of there. The turbo ran for a good 10, 15 minutes, you know, um, not at once, you know, maybe five, five times that the car ran, might've been, you know, two or three minutes each time, 10 to 15 minutes, and that might've killed the turbo. I'm still gonna get it sent out so they can check it and stuff because it is brand new. I just purchased it off Marketplace off a random dude. Bit of a crappy thing to happen, but it was my fault, so we had to work with what we had. As I mentioned, we grab a Ford Barra turbo that I had laying around for some reason, which is a GT3576, a little bit smaller, which actually better suits um, what we're trying to do with this. And we just slapped the rear housing off the Kinagawa onto it so we can still re reuse our dump pipe and everything lines up. All we have to do is get Tristan to modify one of the intercooler pipes. The only crappy thing about this turbo is it's got a three inch intake and not a pretty, you know, big four inch intake. But we can always change the compressor housing for it to, you know, use a four inch intake. But yeah, day two. Good news, I still remember how to weld.
All right, so this is, I think I told you this when I was around at your place that when you run these intake manifolds that have the short runners, yep. you lose some torque that they become ridiculous up in the top end. Right. And that's what we're seeing now is that we hit rev limiter and the power is still going up. No and shit. that's what we see every time when people put these intake manifolds on. Yep. Um, so now the, the question is, the amount of power you want to make all comes down to how high you want to rev the engine. <laughs> right. What's it revving to at the moment? Seven and a half. Okay. Is cool. what we're seeing now. It's yeah. a it's a conservative limit for these. Yeah. Um, I don't really like sending them to eight. Yeah. But every hundred RPM you give it gives it another five or ten horsepower. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so it's up to you. But yeah, um, I'm, I'm more than happy as it sits. Man. Yeah, I was yeah. happy with three hundred. Yeah. Let alone three sixty. Well, we're probably still on gate pressure, right? It's only around fourteen pounds. Right. Um, so I don't know if you want any more than that, but... Well, is the engine knocking? I, I don't know. No, no, there's no knocking yet. Well... I um, haven't even finished actually ripping the power out at this boost level. Yeah. But there's more in it. <laughs> um, so... Yeah. I guess you, you just choose the amount of power you want and yeah. we page up until it happens. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> oh. um, so, I don't know. Maybe this is just the amount of power you like and you just have to play with it like it is. Super safe. Yeah. What? Oh God! It's like, I was happy with three hundred, but now that we can do more. Now that you know you can get more, oh, it's, um, it's a dangerous thing. <laughs> can it? How much more boost can it take before you think it's not safe? So we reckon the compression of this is still up around ten to one, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, on this compression ratio, every pound I put into it from here, I'm going to have to start detuning hard. Right. Um, so you're not going to gain much from yeah. the boost. Uh, just because I'll have to pull it back so severely. So you end up uh, tripling the danger to the engine for yep. small power gains. Right. Yeah. So no, if no, all no. you wanted was 300, you've got 20% more than that off the bat. Yeah. Um, I reckon we leave it at this boost level and just fine tune it as yep. much as we can. Let's do that. I'm yeah. happy with that. Cool, man. I'll Wang it to infinity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we're going to take care of this engine, enjoy the car for a little bit, and, yeah. um, and then we can always build another engine for it. and turn it up so I think I'll yeah. try being mature about it for once <laughs> so yeah uh, alright thank you Tristan okay let's go Alrighty, so we're back at WTF Auto. It's Monday morning and it's time to pick the car up and take it back to the workshop, do a little bit more work, and I think in about a week or two we should should be able to even hit the road. Take it for a drive. It's nice and sunny outside. Summer is just around the corner. Overall, very happy with how everything went. We did have a bit of an issue with the turbo. Had to replace the turbo really quickly and the car didn't blow up surprisingly, didn't do anything weird, made more power than it should have. So overall stoked. We're gonna look at the dyno graph, how much power it made, where it makes the power and also how much torque it's made once we get back to the workshop. But while we're here, um, we're gonna check out Tristan's personal project which is a V12 twin turbo Mark IV Supra. Supras are sick, they're not the best looking cars let's be honest, but the internet loves them. They're very over engineered, but this is just, on another level to have 12 cylinders and the way he's gonna make it work it's pretty much gonna sound like a supercar he's got very very close to equal length exhaust manifolds that he's yeah if this looks funky I've never seen anybody really do this especially on YouTube they are 3d printing everything on this car he's designing everything on a computer he's taught himself how to use software and he's using a very affordable 3d printer I think he paid maybe five or six hundred bucks and he's able to print everything out to make sure it fits the car because everything is very custom and then they get it made out of certain materials or 
like a bill of aluminium and stuff like the engine mounts the sump and stuff and they're going to be using a pair of g35 990 uh turbochargers as well and don't know how much horsepower they're aiming for but it's going to be whoops it's going to be over a thousand i think and yeah there's so much detail on the youtube channel they go into every single detail about the entire build the episodes are nice and lengthy for those that like the information but all I can see from here is that they're using 24 injectors, it's 12 cylinders, and it's running Audi R8 coil packs. Plenty more to come on their channel. I'm gonna link it in the description below. But for now, let's go load the car onto the trailer and head back to the shop. Massive episode for myself, for the car, the viewers that have been following this build series from the start. This car should not have been, this This thing should not be this. It should have been a drift car, it should have been crushed, but it was just the right time at the right place when I picked it up. I did have help from family members, neighbors, friends, to put this thing together. Most of the work has been done by myself, but we can't forget that there are a lot of people behind the scenes that have helped out with this build as well. Um, overall very happy with the result, you made 360 wheel horsepower, I was joking at the start of the video and I said take a number, halve it and halve it if you're in America and then you get a true horsepower figure, but to be honest an American horsepower this thing probably makes 400, 450 wheel horsepower uh, and not 360 because your numbers are a little bit out of proportion and for everybody that's watching this and they're devastated that it is not a thousand horsepower R34 Skyline just like the rest of the internet, let's be honest thousand horsepower for most average people like you and I is just an unrealistic number it's very expensive it doesn't it's not reliable I want to drive this car I want to enjoy this car I don't want this thing to cost me an absolute fortune we're gonna do a build cost very shortly once it's finished and you'll see that this car it doesn't cost a fortune it's a true budget build even though it's a 34 skyline what else do I say if you like this sort of content Consider subscribing for all the people that have been following from the beginning of the build. Liking, sharing, commenting, sending me emails. Don't send me emails. You can message me on Instagram, just don't email me. Message me on Instagram. I want to say a massive, massive, massive thank you to everybody showing support. It has kept me going, pushing forward through this car, getting videos out as soon as possible. The last few months I've been a little bit lazy with it, but till about that February, March time, honestly, I was charging just to as hard as I can just to produce videos and I think that's where most of the progress on the car was made during that period between August and February or March um, we're very close there's probably five or seven days worth of work to finish this car off but I am struggling to find little bits and pieces technically I could drive it on the road the car is registered still uh, but with the Australian laws I'd rather just finish it up a little bit more so if I do get pulled over at least I might be able to talk my way out this time compared to the Sylvia stoked things didn't nothing blow up very happy to the people watching this video and if you've made it this far and you're asking yourself well what's going to come after this what happens when the build series is done is that it for the YouTube channel and I can promise you that this R34 build series has been a dream for me but it is only the beginning. This has only been a warm up. I think I'm finally getting an idea where I want this channel to head, what I want to do with it, what I want to do in, with the car, with things I want to do personally. I think it's going to be epic. Don't forget that there is a Supra behind the scenes as well that we are slowly tinkering with and rebuilding. 
plenty more content to come. Just give me some time to figure out the way I want to do it. But I can promise you it's going to be fucking good. So we'll see you shortly.